Okay, so in this video, we're going to set up a complex object for the asset browser. That way you can utilize this thing very efficiently over and over and over again. It's going to require an add-on called Machine Tools, so you can check the links in the description. Go download that and install it. You're going to want to enable a couple things in the preferences, though. And it's going to be grouping and more than likely the modes pie as well. But we're, I'm going to show you a little workaround with the modes pie so you don't have to use it if you don't want. All right. Nonetheless, let's get started with this thing. This is called an Exo atmospheric kill vehicle and google it's pretty cool but we're going to take this and get it set up in that in the asset browser okay it's going to require kind of three parts to this process first one's going to be i want to select everything and just duplicate it so hit shift d duplicate it out and i want to select this mesh here hold shift and select it so everything is still selected but this is the active element i'm going to right click convert to mesh okay once it's converted to a mesh I can actually make sure it's all still selected over here. Press Control J and join it together. Now this is one object, right? And all these empties got left behind. I use this to control arrays. I can actually just delete them. I only need the mesh. And this one, just for housekeeping, I'm gonna press M and move it to a new collection. I'm gonna call this thumbnail. So this one combined mesh is gonna be used to generate a thumbnail for the asset in the asset library. Okay, that's important to have. and. Uh, once it's created, we can actually collapse that temporarily. We have the thumbnail collection here. Okay, I can just hide it. I don't need it. This collection here, I'm just going to name EKV. Okay, and um, the assets inside of this, I want to group them together. So I'm going to press N. And Machine Tools tab, you'll notice that there's a little um, tab for grouping here, which is awesome. So you have all the tools you might want to utilize there. However, you can also right click and you can group things together or use control G. In this situation, I want to select this main uh, cylinder here. I'm going to press control G. It's going to group it all together and you'll see that it adopts the location or rotation, either the average of the object or the world or whatever. I'm going to use the active element. Okay. And that's going to adopt that main cylinder's origin point right there. Okay. With that in mind, Whenever you deselect this, you'll find that you select individual elements again, and it doesn't really seem like it's a group. But if, if you were to hold shift and double click, it'll select the group like so, as long as nothing was selected. Okay. So you can select that whole group real quick. Otherwise, you can use this little select group button, or you can right click and you'll have select group as well. You can also duplicate this group and do all kinds of other fun stuff. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and... Uh, select this whole group. I want to make sure it is located. So I'm going to go back up to item at 0, 0, 0. So it's at the world origin point. Okay. It's pretty important. It needs to be there. This 3D cursor is not at the world origin point either. So I need to press Shift S and do cursor to origin or world origin and place it right there like so. Um, this group generally speaking, should be at zero, zero, zeros and zeros for rotations and scaled at one. Okay. You don't want to accidentally have this all messed up or that the asset browser doesn't like it usually. I mean, you can't, but it, yeah, it doesn't really like it. If you need to offset, you, you would do it at a different location or whatever. Nonetheless, this is pretty much good to go at this point. I want to go through here and this group, I'm just going to rename EKV. And you'll see that it's underscore EKV underscore group. That happens automatically. Nothing you can do about that, okay? All right, so that's done. Now I can press Shift A, create collection instance. And you'll see we have a EKV collection. I can go ahead and create that as well. All right. Now this one here, you can't modify this. It's not a bunch of separate pieces. This is what's going to be put into the asset browser. So we're going to right click on this one and then we are going to mark this as asset. Okay. Once it's marked as an asset, you can go browse to your asset folder. In this case, I'm going to use the desktop and you can save your file there. Okay. And that will create, um, I will create your asset. So let's take a look at it real quick. Now remember, I'm going to go to preferences real quick. Under file paths, this is where you set up your asset libraries. You have to click the plus sign. Pick the folder wherever your asset was saved and then give it a name and then save your preferences. And then you should be able to go and open up a tab like this. Just drag it open from that corner. And now you should be able to go to Asset Browser. And you should be able to find your asset. So usually it has current file, but 
you should be able to find the, the folder right in the drop down so desktop and then you want to use append generally speaking right in this case we have the ekv right here and you can see that this asset does not have a thumbnail okay so we're going to just hide it real quick we're going to bring back the thumbnail section we can see this thumbnail over here our thumbnail this model okay that's all combined together we're going to use this to generate the thumbnail and so we select ekv here we select this object we press the n key it brings out this side panel and now we can simply just click down here on this little arrow and we can render the active object okay once we do that you'll see it's pink because it actually has a material on it that is not um, the texture is not available for it so i could actually just um, press the minus key get rid of the material and then re-render the object here it'll come in like so all right uh, once you render this it's fine you can delete it okay you don't need it you don't need the thumbnail collection either you can press x over it and it'll delete that as well and this is all that you'll be left with okay now you can of course just save this no problems okay and we're good to go if you were to start a new file okay delete the default cube pull up the asset browser go to my desktop folder you'll see that the ekv is right here okay and i could go ahead and pull it in and place it wherever i need to place it so if i want it back at the center i could just backspace there we go all right and so this is an instance though you can't modify this or do anything to it and this is where machine tools really comes in handy we're going to go to edit preferences add-ons machine tools here and under machine tools modes pi right you enable this you'll see when you select a collection instance such as this you hit the tab key you'll have a symbol collection okay if you click a symbol collection it does all the work for you but it's basically brought that element into your scene and turned it back into the original mesh there okay so it's no longer instances or anything like that it's it's literally the exact same thing it has all of the mirrors all of the arrays all the good stuff right so that's extremely useful however I'm not a big fan of the modes pie all right so what you can do is you can just simply um, when you see that menu pop up you can let's control Z back here a little bit actually let's just delete it I don't need it right now let's drop it back in there you go when you see that pop up right you you know that you can press F3 a symbol collection you can see modes tab a symbol collection you can right click this add it to your quick favorites right and now you can go in here and you can disable modes pi okay and save your preferences at this point we have a collection instance we can hit the q key if you did this and you can assemble collection from here okay pretty cool right Anyways, that's a little workaround if you don't want to use modes pie. I personally don't use it, so you might find that useful. And a symbol collection. There we go. So we're back in business if I needed to modify this anyways, shape or form, like I want to adjust the uh, amount of nuts here. I can do that still. No problems. And go to town. Keep working on it. and make any modifications I want. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will check you out in the next one. Take care.